And how's everyone doing tonight? There we go. How many uh, Redskins fans do we have in the building? All right, folks. Uh, my name is Lake Lewis. No, I do not play for the Redskins, but I cover them uh, every day. Uh, and the gentleman sitting to my left is none other than the Darrell Young fullback for the Washington Redskins. <laughs> Tonight, we're going to talk some Redskins, uh, break down a uh, tough loss yesterday. Uh, this guy does this all the time, and he's gracious enough to come out tonight. Uh, if you're a fan, uh, you can come up in between break, uh, you know, take some pictures if you want to autograph. Uh, he, he's a great guy to do that. So uh, please do not hesitate or feel afraid to come up here when we go to break. We can't do it during the filming, but when we go to break. Also, after tonight's show, you can actually go to uh, sportsjourney.com and actually watch this uh, filming. And uh, in HD, we try to mix it up with uh, the fans out there. So, again, this is an interactive show. So we're going to ask questions throughout the night. Uh, a little bit later on, we're going to bring in uh, Miss Diane Cheesebro, who's also a uh, Redskins insider who's out at Redskins Park. Also, we're going to bring in uh, Mr. Curtis Etherly, who's gracious enough to uh, have this show be presented to you by Coca-Cola. He's over there, so he's going to come on a little bit later on. So... Let's get right into it. What's up, Darrell? What's going on? <laughs> I appreciate you coming out tonight. Uh, thank you. Tough loss yesterday. Yeah, it's frustrating. Uh, two years in a row, you know, going to a situation three and five, three and five, playing the Vikings again on the road at their place. We lose um, up at halftime again, coming up with an emotional win, just like we did with San Diego last year. Um, you know, say uh, Dallas this year. Yeah. I mean, it, it's getting old, but, you know, we're three and six. What do we do about it? You know, we're going into a bye week. We have a chance to get some guys back. You know, maybe Barry Cofield come back after the break. Uh, you know, it's just some guys that, you know, have helped us along the way and not to, you know, say we need to release anybody because everyone's doing a good job. It's just, sure, sure. you know, we're three and six right now, so we just got to be better at what we're doing. Uh, today in the press conference, uh, Jay Gruden said that, <laughs> you know, you can't point the finger at one guy. You know, you can't point the finger at even one coach. Yes, there are a lot of fans. Uh, my, my Twitter account yesterday was going crazy with fans, you know, saying get rid of Jim Hazlitt. You know, he cost us the game. Then you have fans saying, you know, RG3 should have never started. Colt McCoy should have started. It, it, this is the same stuff that, and, and covering this team for a couple of years, it's just, it seems like the drama always unfolds around this time in November. I, I, I will say this. This is a young football team, and there's a lot of players that have come to the forefront. You look at uh, Breland. You know, I think he shows that he could be a really good cornerback in this league. And I think if you look at him and Emerson in general, you've got bookend cornerbacks for the next few years. Gruden said that today. He really likes where they're going with that. You've been here for several years now. Would you say the talent on this team is better than any talent you've ever had? Um, yeah, I would say across the board. You know, we have the most talent that I've been around as a Redskin player. Um, the receivers, I mean, we probably have the fastest receiver core in the league, um, you know, as a whole. Um, other things, I mean, quarterbacks are good and good. You know, it's always, it's always going to be this talk about quarterback going back to Doug Williams and, you know, all those other guys. And it's always quarterback controversy on every team except for, you know, the guys who have basically established themselves, the Tom Denver Brady, the Peyton Manning. Yeah, <laughs> and that's all you can say, you know. So looking at it from that standpoint, you win games, you know, there's nothing to talk about. But like you said, with 3-6 and six at this point, everyone's basically criticizing Robert Griffin for, you know, the game that he's been playing, but that's what he did in 2012 to make him Robert Griffin, which made everyone love him. So sure. you look at, you know, from the standpoint of him just going out there, running around, you know, being himself, everyone's saying, oh, he's holding the ball too long. Well, no one ever really noticed that till a, a commentator said that, and then the commentators, <laughs> you know, it doesn't know our offense. But then again, you look at Russell Wilson, they don't drop back. They, they let him play to his strength. So, you know, and they run Super five Bowl plays champs. in yeah, Super Bowl <laughs> They run five plays, but they're very good. They're very good at the five plays. It's kind of like a John Madden style of offense got six plays but this is what we're going to do you know so yeah. looking at it from that standpoint um you know like i said we got to be better you know talent wise like you said i mean it is what it is but talent doesn't win games so you know looking at it like that we just got to be better in terms of executing and finishing games we we had the game you know we were up we we're up 10 nothing we win the game 10 nothing that's what it's going to be you know so uh, i thought our defense did a good job we didn't put them in the best situation in terms of halftime you know before the half you know throwing that interception and Obviously, they're going to have momentum doing that stuff. You know, chances are they're going to get a field goal out of it. That's just how football works. But it happened. We should have put up, you know, 31 points when they had 29. You well, know? well but, so. but, but let, me, let me just pose this at you. If I told you before the game that you guys were coming home from Minnesota with 26 points, would you have thought that that was a W? Um, I would say, yeah, just because, you know, I don't know what they've been doing offensively, but I know that they're in the same situation as, situ uh, situation as us sure. at 3-5 and five going into that game, you know. So, right. obviously, they weren't doing something right to win those games. And, 
you know, that's just the you know, fact of the matter of what it is. So. Well, well I, I say this to, to a lot of fans who, you know, they go down and they look at the schedules and they say, you know, this is a team that, you know, we should beat. They've, they've uh, been hearing it about Tampa Bay when you Can't come back from it. the bye. It's Can't the NFL. Do it. Can't do it. It's just the like NFL. Tony Gonzalez, you know, Bill Cowell, all those guys laughed when basically before the game started when we were playing the Dallas Cowboys, then we beat the Cowboys, and all of a sudden, you know, it, 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 you're not laughing anymore. So the game's played on the field, regardless of what scale that Vegas has, it doesn't matter. The, the game's played on the field. You've got to go out there. You've got to execute. You've got to win. Uh, just put yourself in a situation. You know, all you can do as an NFL player – you know, let's go out there and say, did I put myself in the best situation to make this team win? Now, of course, you want to win, and people are going to criticize when you do lose, and everyone has an insight. Everyone has an input. But last time I checked, Jay Gruden's the head coach, so I can't worry about what, you know, all the outside noise is, you know, saying right now. Folks, uh, Lake Lewis right here uh, with Darrell Young from the Washington Redskins here from uh, Champs at uh, Pentagon Row, uh, Champs Ale House here at Pentagon Row. Uh, remember, you can always check this out on uh, sportsjourney.com. If you go back now and you look at the division, it, for a while, it, it seemed like the Cowboys may run away with the thing. Uh, the Eagles were playing pretty well. They still are, but they've been hit with adversity. Both their quarterbacks, their starting quarterbacks are out. Uh, Tony Romo may come back in, in London next weekend. Uh, when you look at Nick Foles, I mean, no one's saying, but broken clavicle. We saw that last year with Aaron Rodgers. Pretty much knocked him out for the rest of the season, seven, eight games. I don't think you're going to see Nick Foles back this year unless they make the playoffs. I say that because not to, not to do what a lot of Redskins fans, excuse me for saying this, do and just give them some hope, <laughs> but you do have to think that there's still some football left in this football team, meaningful football. It could be interesting down yeah, the road. Well, like you said, we were in this situation a couple of years ago when the Eagles lost Michael Vick. You know, Tony Romo was hurt and then, you know, ended up playing. His back is still the same as it was in 2012, you know. <laughs> yeah. So I just know he's a competitor. He'll put his team in a situation. But we can't worry about what those other teams are doing. Obviously, we have to rely on some other team to beat them. To, you know, sure. we got to go on our stretch. But we need to fix ourselves first. So, you know, going into the bye week, if you need to get away from the game, that's what we need to do and, you know, come back from it. You know, just look at it like, hey, this is how we're going to approach this thing. Now, Tampa Bay is a really good team. People are counting out Tampa Bay because of their record. But last time I checked, Riley Smith, you know, went to the Super Bowl with that defense sure. in terms of scheme. Sure, um, sure. Looking at their players, Sean Golson, they just got rid of Barron, but they got Levante David, who's arguably one of the best linebackers in the game. You know, the D-line's playing really good, so good you know, they got corners out there who are playing really well. I mean, those guys fit that scheme, so once they get on board with things, you know, Lovey has done it before. You know, you look at what he's did, you know, he got fired because they didn't have a good season because he didn't make the playoffs, but he knows how to win. So if anyone's counting Tampa out in terms of, you know, us not winning that game, I mean, we're two ball clubs that are struggling right now and basically don't know how to win. You know, and that's what it comes down to. So now we Close just got to find out. out. Yeah, absolutely. So if we go four and six, come out of this game, then we look forward to going five and six, then six and six, kind of going this seven game stretch that you need to do. And like I said, everyone's still living in the past of 2012 because that's what you know. That's what we ex we're excited about. Different but that's season. what we did, you know. It's but a it's a season. very it's a different season. But it's still almost the same exact team with some more talent added to it, you know. So. Um, from that standpoint, we just got to be better. We got to, you know, be better defensively, offensively. I thought special, special teams hasn't really been the conversation besides early in the season in terms of giving stuff up. But, you know, we've been better on that side of the ball, causing turnovers, doing some things we haven't done in a long time, you know, since Danny Smith, really. You know, so, well, your, your punter is um, going to the Pro Bowl. He's, he's ridiculous. <laughs> like to punt 50 yards against the win. Yeah. People don't understand that, flipping the field, how big that is in the game. And, you know, the Vikings had two 80-yard drives, and they did some things. Hey, credit to them. Like I said, they did a good job. They're a football team. They get paid. You know, they're out there obviously practicing every week. That's what you're doing training camp that's you know that's what you go into the season for you can't ever count any team out who knew jacksonville would beat cleveland a couple weeks ago you know going to that game at you know cleveland's five and three now or whatever they are so well, um <laughs> we'll see, see, see this is this is where you know i know it would be tough to, to come out and say it but you know one of the things that that has come up and with us in the media here is that you know, some people think that there's a riff between, you know, you guys as players and with us in the media. It might be. It, <laughs> it might be. It, well, I say this all the time. You can't put everybody in a bunch. You, you can't. You know, some people have good relationships. Some people don't. What is your assessment of what's going on with us in the media who are out there every day at Redskins Park and you guys as players? I think you guys are always putting the negative stuff before the positive stuff, and that's what bothers us as players because – at the end of the day, we're still human beings. We're still going to read what you're saying, you know, basically interpret it how we're going to interpret it. But if you guys are constantly jumping down our backs about how a quarterback's not good for this team when he was the winner on this team, yeah. we know when our running back's not productive, when he's still the same guy that rushed for over Alfred's back now, all of a sudden he's back in one game. No, it doesn't matter. We're still human beings. We're still going to look at what you say. But 
like I said, every time we, you know, we do something, guys don't want to talk to you because you got guys like the guy from the Washington Post looking for every, every negative thing that we say and then putting it into an article. Nobody wants to hear that. We're still human at the end of the day. We go out there, we play, we practice. Of course, we want to win. But like you said, it's on us too because it fall on us, falls back on us because if we win, there's no noise. So, it'd I mean, a it, tough, it's a tough sell. It'd know, be a tough sell. Yeah. I, I mean, again, you know, these are my colleagues, you know, and, and maybe, maybe the approach by everyone – isn't necessarily always the best approach. I, I, I do think that, you know, our job is to report what we see, good and bad. Yeah. I, I kind of like to stay on the, the positive side of things, uh, but this year has been tough. It's you been know, tough. It, it's been tough for me personally as tough a journalist. Than last year? Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> I'm just asking. You said <laughs> Being in the building is different, you yeah. know, but, but I, I can say this. I do think that. There are a lot of young guys on this team that are leaders. I actually think I'm sitting next to one. And I think that there has to be a shift from what, from just, this is just my opinion, no one else's opinion, not even Diane when she comes on. But I think there has to be a shift to the true leaders of the locker room to be able to be vocal and get away with it. So let me ask you something. Uh-huh. You know, being the guy in the locker room now, you're the outsider looking in on things. I'm going to give you my perspective afterwards. But you're in the locker room every day. What, what do you think we're missing? Because everyone seems to have an opinion. What do you think? Let me hear I, another I, opinion. I, I've said it. <laughs> I've said it. I've said it from day one. And I just said it a second ago. Although you are a leader by example, I think this team is missing a true vocal leader. And I mean a leader that is respected by everyone, is respected by everyone, is feared by everyone. I, I just naturally, I will say this. I think that that should eventually fall on to the starting quarterback, because I will say this. If you look in Denver, I'm not saying Peyton Manning's a jerk at all, but I guarantee you guys do not want to drop passes over and over from Peyton Manning. But credentials always outshine that, too. Yeah, and he's a guy that's done established himself. Absolutely. He always do that. Now, Robert Griffin's a young guy. He's still 23 years old. That's fair. He's 23. He came into the league at 21. He basically got put on this platform, and everyone's, you know, he, he didn't you, ask to be there. But do you think Andrew Luck? has the attention of his teammates. He doesn't have the media attention over there either. It's a different no, market. No, that's a different market. It's a different market. I'll give you that. And Andrew Luck, like you said, they win the games. They're going to the playoffs, so there's nothing to really dispute over there. But You guys you know, went to the playoffs we with, did. with the Robert, year, and he did. was a rookie we of the did. year. But now everyone's saying that he's not. Well, not everyone. Not everyone. Because I said this yesterday. 60% of the world wants everyone else to play. <laughs> I thought Robert Griffin played well yesterday. I, did I thought he made some throws that, no offense to Colt, because I, I think he's a great guy. I think Kurt's a great guy. Robert made some throws that those two guys can't make flat out, bottom mm-hmm. line. Robert put this team in position to win a football game. It was a group loss. I mean, you got to look at it that way. The defense did some things okay. They did some things they shouldn't have done. But at the end of the day, you ask the question, I think this team, from what I see with my own eyes, I think you're missing an established leader that, that really could demand the attention of, of, of the locker room. And I don't know how you fix that because you said this is a young football team. You bring in Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun Jackson is a guy that leads by what he does on the field. Uh, and he's in his first year here. So I'm, I'm sure he's still feeling his way out too. Robert Griffin hasn't played in a while. So he's coming back just trying to get on the field and do his thing. So ultimately it falls down to the head coach. I will say this. I've been a huge Jay Gruden proponent, a fan. I think he's the perfect hire for this team uh, from what I see. And, and talking with him every day, he seems like a, a guy that is a stand-up person. He will praise you, and he will also put foot in you. And, and I think that that's a great, a, a, a great thing. It's a good balance there. I, I, am I off with that? No, no, you're fine. No, I mean, Jay, like you said, you know, I, I'm a Shanahan guy because he gave me a chance. You know, I'm a Jay guy because he's giving me a chance, you know, regardless of what the situation that we're in. But, you know, Jay, like you said, is an honest guy. He gave us an F-plus today, <laughs> you know, for effort. And, you know, I can smile about it and laugh about it. But at the end of the day, I mean, is that true? Yeah, you know what he's coming three, from. Three and six. I'm, he's just being honest with us. And, you know, basically for the talent that we have across the board, we should not be in this situation, you know. So I think uh, we kind of got to look at ourselves in the mirror. It's not about, you know, what other teams are doing because you look at the situation, you know, four interceptions, uh, penalties, leading, you know, 13 penalties in one game, uh, you know, 
not not you know not doing anything to execute at the end of the game. You know, basically not knowing how to win the game as players. You know, because sure. the coaches can't go on the field. They put you through the plays, and you're like, you guys are in a boot fight. That guy's open. Why didn't he throw it? You know, or let the running back miss that hole, or this guy missed that block. You know, so look at it from that standpoint. If the fans see it, then we need to do something about it because we know what's going on, and you know we're graded differently from you know the coaches graded differently from you know the way the media grades us because we know the scheme. You know, so. I think, uh, you know, if the outside is looking in, if a guy missed a block and it's clear, I mean, we just got to be better in that situation. And, you know, I thought uh, yesterday we competed. You know, that, that call versus Sean Laval at the end, I mean, it was, it was up in the yeah, air, but they called it. So, it was. You know, they it called it. it. They gave us another chance. And, yeah. I thought Emerson you know, so. had an interception as well. I, I mean, thought so too, and I thought that guy foot came off the ground, but that's the way they <laughs> called it, you know. So I was home cooking, a little, little, little home cooking there. So, it. look, folks, uh, Darrell Young joins us right now here. Champs Americana uh, restaurant. We were actually uh, a couple weeks ago at the uh, Champs Americana in Columbia, Maryland. Had a great time up there. Uh, Tyrod Taylor from the Ravens came out. Chris Thompson, one of your young understudies here in D.C., uh, he, he was up there as well. Tonight, folks, uh, here from uh, Pentagon Row, and uh, it's a great establishment. How many of you love the food in here? How many of you love the drinks in here? <laughs> Look, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll bring in Mr. Curtis Adderley from Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is helping provide some of this stuff that you are drinking tonight. So when he comes on, we'll talk about that. Big, uh, big Redskins supporter as well, so I'm sure he's going to have some questions to fire up for you. Oh, man. And then after that, we're going to bring in uh, Ms. Diane Cheesebro, a person that uh, near and dear to myself, been part of my uh, company for several years now, and uh, one of the very few female reporters that are, that's out at Redskins Park every day and really does a great job. So when she comes on, we'll talk with her and get her take on what's going on right now at Redskins Park. So hang tight, folks. We'll be right back. If you're one of the millions of Americans who are disabled and unable to work, you may be entitled to disability benefits through Social Security. Receiving benefits is your right if you suffer from a physical or mental disability. Whether you're applying for the first time or you've already been denied, we can help. You'll be matched up with an advocate who will evaluate your situation, handle your application, and deal with Social Security for you. And best of all, there's no fee until you receive benefits. Call today. When you have credit card debt, the debt suckers, high rate and high pay are everywhere. Ooh, they're making another minimum payment. Great. Most of the money goes to us. We'll suck the life out of them. Because your credit card rates are so high, you can't get rid of the debt suckers alone. Their minimum payments are in vain. No, that's juicy. But one call to Consolidated Credit can get the debt suckers off your neck. Thank you for calling Consolidated Credit. Oh no, they're low or his rates and consolidate his bills into one low payment. He'd pay off his debt in no time. Consolidated Credit drives us batty. Call Consolidated Credit now. Call now and get your life back. Oh, because debt sucks. Call now. Call Consolidated Credit at 1-800-599-8702. 1-800-599-8702. That's 1-800-599-8702. Call now. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? Hi, I'm George Foreman. People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? Do you have the same questions? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at InventHelp. InventHelp has been helping inventors for more than 30 years and has sales offices nationwide. InventHelp can provide patent referrals and submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new ideas. If you have an idea and want to try to patent it and submit it to companies, you should call InventHelp today for free information. Listen, I can't guarantee your company will be interested in your idea, but I believe every inventor deserves the opportunity to step into the ring and take their best shot. Put InventHelp in your corner. Call now. Free information for inventors. 1-800-455-7790. 1-800-455-7790. The new Miracle Blade World Class 2012 Professional Series is the best set of knives you'll ever own. The spectacular World Class 2012 Series, over a $300 value for just $39.95. But we're just getting started. 
we'll send you a complete second set of Miracle Blades for free. That's right, another entire set, a $300 value for free. Just pay shipping and processing. And we're still not done. If you're one of the first 500 callers, we'll send you two additional Miracle Blade World Class Slicers. That's an additional $80 value, totally free. Miracle Blade World Class is also guaranteed for life. We'll replace any damaged knife at any time for any reason for free forever. Over $600 worth of knives for just one payment of $39.95. Don't miss this opportunity. Call right now or just log on to MiracleBlade.com. All right, folks, we're back here from uh, Champs L House here at uh, Pentagon Row. Myself, Lake Lewis, uh, joined by Washington Redskins, starting fullback Darrell Young. And to his left, uh, we're going to welcome in now Mr. Curtis Etherly, who is the Director of uh, Public Affairs and Communications at Coca-Cola, who's uh, presenting this show to you. So uh, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Lake. So glad to be here. Good to see you again. And good to see you, D.Y. Always a pleasure. <laughs> now, these two gentlemen know each other, too. Uh, Curtis does a lot of stuff with the Washington Redskins uh, Coca-Cola account. <laughs> it is set up with this gentleman. Uh, you know, one of the things that we've done uh, in, in partnering with Coca-Cola is they have a great initiative is uh, health and wellness. And Champs Americana, not just here, but in Colombia, where we came from, and all the Champs Americanas are uh, actually have Coke products here. So, uh, a lot of fans who are sitting in here right now may be drinking something from Coke. But one of the things you're doing with the health and wellness is uh, letting people know about the, the the other side of Coke. You know, everyone talks about that can, but you guys have some great things, uh, some some great products that are actually good for people that people uh, you know, may not know about. Can you let them know about some of those items? Sure, Lake. Well, again, thank you so much for, for having me. It's, it's a pleasure to be with you. When we talk about health and wellness, we want our consumers to know that for almost 130 years, Coca-Cola has been very much focused on bringing people together mm -hmm. to solve problems that confront our communities. And as we talk and debate and discuss this issue of obesity, we want our consumers, we want our customers to know that we very much can be part of that solution, whether it's looking at over 150 no and low calorie uh, uh, beverage brands that we have as part of the Coca-Cola portfolio of beverages, uh, Honest Tea as a part of the portfolio, local homegrown beverage here, uh, uh, born and raised essentially in Bethesda, Maryland. Uh, we want our consumers to know that we can be part of your thinking and part of your decision making around an active and healthy lifestyle. We all need to hydrate. That's critical. We know that. D.Y. knows that as a professional athlete. He needs to stay <laughs> hydrated. Uh, if you're not hydrating with Coca-Cola, you can hydrate with Dasani. And it's very important that we help our consumers understand that, that we have a beverage to meet all of their tastes. But it goes even further because when we talk about partnering with uh, friends like the Washington Redskins, the Washington Redskins Charitable Foundation, we are leveraging the star power of athletes like Darrell Young, uh, teammates, uh, to talk about how do we encourage our young people to stay active, to stay fit, whether you're uh, hoping to play professional football or not. Right. And so we've been so pleased to be a partner with the Washington Redskins for a number of decades. But over the last four years in particular, we've done some exciting things to bring young people out to Ashburn, out to FedEx Field, and mm. expose them to great athletes like Darrell. Man, Darrell does a lot with the Charitable Foundation and things. Uh, you guys were just together. Uh, Two uh, weeks in a row. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like for you, Darrell? I mean, obviously, uh, working with Curtis and Coca-Cola and doing some things. I know you're one of the one of the main guys for the Redskins that, that, that does a lot of these things with the youth out there. Uh, well, one of, the first, one of the first times that, you know, I got a chance to meet Curtis is, uh, you know, it was the Fourth and Life event, you know, with the high school students and, uh, you know, going back a couple of years now. And, uh, you know, just the opportunity to get, you know, some players like myself this year, Tyler Columbus, uh, you know, Chris Baker, uh, you know, Alfred Morris has done it before, uh, you know, Kerrigan has done it before, Trent Murphy this year. You know, guys that, you know, basically – you know, just tell their story about things and how, you know, they just, you know, what led them to be NFL players and stuff like that. And that's when I got a chance to meet, me, uh, meet Curtis, and he told me he had a big, you know, big part in setting it up and stuff like that. So, you know, I thought that was cool. And then to come back and do flag football with, you know, younger kids and just to, to see that he impacts, you know, different ages, not just older guys, not just younger kids, you know. So just to have that, you know, diversity in terms of affecting, 
you know, amount of people that he can, you know, I was excited about it. Then I got to actually meet him, and then he told me he was a friend of yours, and I said, all right, this guy's cool with me, and I'll give him a chance, and then, you know, he gave me a chance, so, uh, you know, like I said, he, you know, he's been one of those guys that, you know, you can see who's trying to do everything to basically put, you know, people, you know, above, you know, anything that they, you know, haven't accomplished yet in life, and, you know, obviously making his family up there, and, you know, just doing the little things right that, you know, people tend to forget about. Did, did you know one of the things that uh, Darrell has always wanted to do uh, as far as uh, long term with kids? Can, can we say that? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in the process of getting my master's to, uh, in sports management. You know, I want to be athletic director just because, you know, I've lived this dream. And, you know, people between, or kids, I should say, they, between ages of 18 to 25 basically don't have a direction. So, you know, whether it's from high school to college, college to the real world, high school to the real world, whatever it may be, being at the top of my career, being at the low, you know, being cut and all, all of the stuff, I feel like I can have a, have a helping hand, you know, basically influencing and impacting people, you know, where they're going to go with this thing. So, you know, I was actually meeting you and seeing what you're doing with Coca-Cola, and I did learn something about Coca-Cola hydrating today because <laughs> I can tell you, I, I used to love soda, and I stopped, and I'm going to get back to drinking soda if it's going to hydrate, <laughs> you know, but... Uh, you know, looking from that standpoint. You didn't know that? No, I didn't know that. But when even, I was I growing I up, they used to give you Coca-Cola. Yeah, I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't even know Dasani was part of Coke. You know, I, did, I learned something new today. So, uh, I have yet to have the tea. I heard the tea is really good. <laughs> Come on over. I got a few samples for you. Is it sweet tea? We've got sweet tea. We've got unsweetened. You name it, we have it in the Honest Tea Portfolio, Fuse, uh, Gold Peak. We've got a number of options for you. I just sent me so I'll give you my address later. That's a done deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, done see, deal. see that? I, I think that's, yeah, we, we're going to have to set that up. Now, now, look, Curtis is a big Redskins fan. And, uh, you know, let, let's let's get, so so you don't have to jump on us anymore in the media, Darrell. How, how about we get a, a, a fan's perspective? That's all that matters is fans' perspectives and players' perspectives. That's messed media up, man. We, we help make you guys, make the stories great. <laughs> no, I got you. If you score, if you, you know, last year, three touchdowns against San Diego, you know, it Darrell Young was, was the talk of the town. And you know, I think we had something to do yeah, with that. Absolutely. No, you absolutely. did that yourself. You're the one who took the ball in the end zone. But, but, but Curtis, what, what do you see as, as a fan with this team? Sure. I, I mean, again, it's, it's, it's an honor to be here with, with Darrell uh, because I see what he brings to the field every week. Uh, I see what he brings to our young people. Uh, so it's good to marry those two notions of a player up. Sure. We oftentimes see these gentlemen on the field Sunday, and that's it. Right. And we don't think or don't contemplate all that goes into preparing for Sunday, all that they do on their off days in support of the community. So it, it's an honor. Let me say this as a fan, and I'm going to go two weeks back and then come, come to, uh, to, to this past week in Minnesota. If nothing else can be said, the fact that we went down to Jerry's world <laughs> and took care of business in Texas and beat the hated Dallas Cowboys – I'm set for the rest of the season as a fan. So congratulations here, on that. Though. They still have to come here. Yeah. We're going to take care of business there too. But, but let me say congratulations on a great Thank win because we haven't seen each other since that victory. <laughs> Most certainly yesterday's result, the result was not what we wanted to see. Are we seeing growth and improvement in this team? I think so as a fan. You talked a little bit in the first segment about what we see from uh, our young bookend cornerbacks. Uh, we're seeing that development. We're seeing young guys step up when someone falls due to an unfortunate accident. Uh, and most certainly to D. Hall, get well, no more pizza, please, D. Hall. We just want you to get well and get healthy. <laughs> Come on back. But let me ask you this, D. D. Y., as, as, as a fan, what is your sense about where the locker room is? We hear a lot as fans, you know, most certainly stories broke yesterday, <laughs> timing, interesting. What's your sense about the locker room? Is, is there still a sense of camaraderie and, and, and family and support there? You know what? There is a sense of camaraderie. Um, you know, that's something that Jay preached when he came in. You know, he said, we're going to get rid of the people, you know, who basically don't want to help us on this path that we're about to go on. You know, so I think, uh, you know, from that standpoint, I don't think anyone's lost the locker room. Rob, Rob is still our quarterback. You know, we still have our captains, all that stuff. But as a player being in there and a guy that I think is pretty well liked in myself, I think, you know, I joke around, I joke around with a lot of people. I think I think we we're close still, you know. I mean, obviously, people are gonna like different things because we are human, you know. I I don't want to go to the movies with, you know, one of the linemen because he's gonna eat all the popcorn there and all that other <laughs> stuff. I mean, whatever it may be, you know. But uh, from that standpoint, you know, I just uh, you know, I th I think we're a close team. It just sucks because when you're losing, it's hard to say that. It's hard to prove any point, 
that everyone has questions to when you're losing, you know. So if we're winning, there's no questions about, you know, Aaron Rodgers in his locker room right now, okay. Peyton Manning in his locker room, maybe after yesterday's loss. But, you know, <laughs> other than that, I mean, there's no questions about where those guys are going because they're winning. Now teams are starting to, you know, Seattle's talked about a little bit more, but they're still, you know, oh, no, they're still unstoppable, you know. So looking at it from that standpoint, I think when you win games, you eliminate all the noise, and that's all that matters. So we just got to. We know what we're in the locker room. We know what we're capable of doing. Like you said, you talked about how we you know, spend all this time in the offseason getting together and working and doing all this stuff. People won't see what goes on. I mean, you have to have a bond, bond with me when you're with people, you know, 300 days out of the year. You, you almost have to, you know. So, yeah. But you're uh, also going to fight, too. I mean, family that's fights. That's you the know, best part. That, that, that's, that but happens. you leave that in training camp. You argue now in the season because you want, you expect somebody to have your back. That's what the arguments are about now. And, you know, it sucks because, you know, the arguments are a little more heated than they should be. But, um, you know, when, when you're arguing about that's a good sign for your football team because you're actually cares. showing that people care, you yeah. know. So I think, uh, you know, looking forward for things. Like I said, we win games. We'll be talking about this in Chimps, L, Champs L House where we're at right now mm -hmm. in a couple of weeks talking about, oh, well, this is what you guys needed to do to basically, you know, get to where you're at now, and you did it. Gotcha. So Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. Like I said, I, no one player I think is uh, is above the team or below the team for that matter. And, and I do think that. You know, as I've said before, not to knock any of our national colleagues, uh, I'm sure Diane could say this as well. You know, I, I, I former national colleague myself, but now covering local and, and strictly doing this, I, I can say that some things may be blown out of proportion nationally. Because if you're not there every day, what you may see may be what you interpretate. But but that's not what the case was, and and I think that you know yesterday was a situation where that kind of got out of hand a little bit. And I had some fans ask me today, you know, you're there every day. Are you, are you uh, on the side of the national media or, or the insiders? And I'm like an insider because that's what I am. And, no, I, we've had several interviews where players have, you know, made noises and intentionally, you, you know, in a funny way, right. tried to, you know, make the noises too loud for us to hear what we were asking. They did it to Hazlitt last week. I mean, you know, just in a joking way. But again, if you're not here every day, you may see that and think we're being disrespectful towards a certain yeah. player. That's not really what the case was. Fair to say that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I, th I think what's important about what we're going through as, as, a, as a franchise, as a, as a fan base is let's not lose sight of the fact that, that again, as, as you heard D.Y. say, there's some things he wants to do during football, after football, in terms of working with young people. The last three weeks, we've brought probably over 600 young people through Ashburn mm -hmm. uh, to FedEx Field, and then in partnership with the Ravens up to M&T Bank Stadium. Let's focus on Ashburn and FedEx Field for a moment because there we probably had 500 of those 600 young people. Wow, wow. So here we are during a time where the team is, by many indicators, struggling. But you still have starting fullback. You still have starting members of the defense and the defensive secondary coming out and interacting with these young people in a very positive way. We had young people from boys and girls clubs, from local high schools, both athletes and non-athletes. And the fact that these athletes came out in Ashburn in particular with smiles on their faces and talked about what it takes to prepare each and every week, that can't be emphasized enough in terms of the type of quality players we have in this team. And oftentimes we don't talk about that. And I think that's important to say, not only because D.Y. is here, but no, because no, I, of the, the, the men who stand behind him as members of the team. It's so important. That's a lesson that they give to these young people each and every, uh, every time we bring them out. And it's important that they hear that as, as competitors. Well, a lot of times, too, you know, after a tough loss, I mean, there's a lot of guys that we may say, hey, Lake, look, <laughs> you know, I'm not up to this, you know, the next day. You know, I knew this guy would come. I mean, this guy's a stand-up person. And, and that's why I said earlier, as far as leaders, I, I think he's a leader. I think he's one of these guys. I'm not saying that because we're friends. I think he's a true leader on this team. I, I'd just like to see the organization be able to empower the, 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 the younger guys to be leaders so that if they do need to step up and say something, it, it's respected. I think guys respect him. But he's still, he's still a pup, too. He doesn't want to hear that. <laughs> I mean, but dude, what's this, your fifth year? Six. Six year. Well, I mean, you know, you're you kind of getting up there a little <laughs> bit. You know, that's not that young. <laughs> but, but again, you know, and I, I've heard things, you know, obviously. We, we, we hear things that go on. And, and, and I've been told that he's actually, you know, expressed some displeasure at practice, you know, with guys, as I'm sure they may have done to him. And I'm sure that's part of the game, and it, and it needs to happen. So 
not to stir the pot. Uh, I, I thought your question was great. You know, that was that was a, a journalistic question that you just posed to him. I appreciate that. Thank you. That's, <laughs> and that's, he that's looked apart, you know, so, uh, yeah, good stuff. But well, look. Well, I just wanted to say I wanted to take it easy on the Villanova guy. As, as a Georgetown <laughs> Hoya lawyer, as we like to say, 85. I want to take it easy 85. on the Villanova dude. So I didn't want to give him a hard question. I didn't want to give him a hard question, so I gave him something a little easy to work with. Well, we got sports there. We got basketball. So, so listen, listen, you got Curtis and you got my wife over there, big time Hoyer, so you're, you're in bad company. So look, uh, folks, uh, do you have to take a quick break? I um, want to again thank uh, Mr. Curtis Everly, as always. Appreciate it. Thank you, Lake. Coca-Cola presenting this show to you. We'll take a break. When we come back, more Redskins chatter. Darrell Young, myself, we're going to bring in uh, Miss Diane Cheesebro, another Redskins reporter that's out at Redskins Park every day. I know you want to get some food before we come back, so we'll take a quick break <laughs> right here. Champs Ale House here at Pentagon, Pentagon Row. Road. Hang tight. Do you want whiter teeth in five minutes? Then you want Power Swabs, the clinically proven way to instantly have bright white teeth in just five minutes. Coffee, tea, or smoking stains are no match for Power Swabs. The secret is a tooth detergent developed by Dr. Martin Ginniger that lifts yellow stains off of your teeth in just five minutes, revealing a bright white smile. Power Swabs are clinically proven to whiten your teeth on average two shades whiter in just five minutes. After seven days, your teeth will be on average six shades whiter, guaranteed. Order today and you can try Power Swabs risk-free. Power Swabs even work on caps, crowns, veneers, and bonding, so all your teeth will be movie star white. With just one treatment, I saw what I want my smile to look like. I, I saw the brightness that should be there when I smile. <laughs> well, I love to laugh. I'm a very happy person. And with Power Swabs, I get the white smile that I want. Call or go online right now to try Power Swabs absolutely risk-free. So you must order now. Get your teeth whiter in just five minutes with Power Swab. Call to try Power Swabs risk-free now. Medical emergencies. This is Life Alert. Are you okay? I've fallen and I can't get up. I'm calling for help right now. Sharon, we received a smoke signal coming from your kitchen. Get out now. We're calling the fire department. Home invasion. <laughs> Emergencies away from home. I'm trying to get to my car, but it's still a ways away. I'm right here and we'll stay on the line with you and we can contact the police if necessary. And you can have this protection away from home for just $19.95 per month. If it weren't for Life Alert, I wouldn't be sitting here today. Life Alert saves a life from a catastrophe every 11 minutes. For a free Life Alert brochure, call 1-800-830-1951. That's 1-800-830-1951. Call now, 1-800-830-1951. For a free brochure, call 1-800-830-1951. NCAA Women's Basketball. All day, every day, our game. Filling it up, knocking them down, and bringing it home. It's basketball at its purest. For family fun and great entertainment, there's nothing like it. NCAA Women's Basketball. All day, every day, our game. When you have credit card debt, the debt suckers, high rate and high pay are everywhere. They're making another minimum payment. Great. Most of the money goes to us. One call to Consolidated Credit can get the debt suckers off your neck. And lower his rates. And consolidate his bills into one low payment. Consolidated Credit drives us batty. Call Consolidated Credit now. Because debt sucks. Call now. Call Consolidated Credit at 1-800-599-8702. So we're back here, uh, Champs Americana Restaurant here at Pentagon Row, Arlington, Virginia. Darrell Young, Washington Redskins, starting fullback, myself, Lake Lewis. And now we're bringing in a young lady at the end uh, to the left of Darrell, Miss Diane Cheesebro, who is also a Redskins reporter, uh, reports to Redskins Park every day, does a great job for us here at Sports Journey. And 
you're one of the, and I, and I can say this, you know, I know she's going to get upset with me, but she's one of the senior females <laughs> that's out at Redskins you Park. You just called me a young lady. I, I did, but the, sen- the seniority is a good thing, though. Yes, it you is. know, that's a respected thing. And, uh, you know, Diane does a great job. And, and, and she's one of the Thanks. reporters out there as well that I can say that, you know, you, you try to keep things positive. And I know you're I a big fan of this gentleman here. Big time. It's going to be tough for what I'm getting ready to ask you, though. But, but what do you see? that perhaps is a problem at Raskins Park right now. Do you know, for the first time since I've been covering the team, I'm having a, a little bit of a hard time figuring it out. And I'm not saying I ever absolutely knew, mm-hmm. but I think young guys learning how to be professional football players is always going to be a growing process. They've had the offense, and Darrell may be able to attest that it's not that big of a deal, but it seems like it might be hard to switch between three different quarterbacks. Um, but Good point. But there's just something. What's really bothering me is the fact that there seems to be something coming out of that park that is would not be something that people would want to come out of that park. And maybe that's a symptom of a bigger problem. I think you guys look like such a solid locker room in the locker room. But I get a little defensive for you when somebody says something that's a leak. Yeah, yeah. And I'm and I would love to fi- you know for you to figure out a way to fix that cuz I think it would help. Wins. Okay. Say again? Wins. Uh, yeah. Wins will games. help and it, that does help. It certainly puts a positive thing, you know, spin on things, but um, Did you actually think there are players that are that are leaking information out? I don't. I actually don't. I think it's, think it's organizational. Yeah, but I mean so, but, but, but do we, and, and I know Darrell, you know, for, for the sake of, of not getting in trouble. Sure. But, but I find it hard to believe. I've said this all day today. I find it hard to believe that Dan Snyder told Jay Gruden I don't to play it. Robert. I, I just, I, I don't, don't buy that. It. I don't buy that. I don't uh-huh. buy it at all. And I think if you're a fan out there, you're so used to being fed this stuff that unfortunately comes from outlets that aren't here every day and because of the power and size of the outlets and I came from it so I understand you believe it and sometimes the common sense should prevail all the time listen I mean you 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 guys know your coach and you know the strength of your coach I would find it hard to believe that he would accept the job here knowing that that was supposedly the problem of years past and see it right now. I, I, there's no way. No yeah. way. And I know you have to stay clear of it yeah, as a player. Yeah, I know, yeah, I understand. He's just so I just, I yeah, I understand. He's like, listen, I just, I, I just, Diane and me, we, we have a hard time. Most of us here who cover you guys every day have a hard time. And, and I paid no attention to it, actually, when I heard it, because I just thought, again, it was just, mm-hmm. you guys as, an, as a team, as an organization, have been so used to being beaten down you mm-hmm. know on the national scene because you make money for people whether you realize this or not i mean when you when you lead the story of rg 3s playing and players are mad that he's playing it, first of all that that could have been taken out of you know content too because i talked to a lot of guys that you know were happy for colt's success last week that wouldn't wouldn't have minded seeing him start another game nothing to do with robert at all not at just, all <laughs> just that colt played well and he's a good guy but you guys know in order to go where you're going to go and where you're trying to get to as far as being an elite team, a playoff team, you need Robert Griffin to be the guy that's going to take you there, and you're comfortable saying that, right? Yeah, I mean, he's our quarterback. <laughs> you know? Whoever Jay designates as the uh, starting quarterback, that's who we're you know, going to war with. Well, can I ask a quick question? Sure. So Trent said last week that you guys just go line up and behind whoever's calling the plays. That's it. You do. That's your job. But there must be a little bit of a difference – in the typical things you hear about cadence, you know, timing, whatever, is does it can you can you adjust to that in five minutes, five series, well, three practices? The good thing is that we're in training camp with all three of those guys, True honestly. That. Um, but looking at it from there, I mean, obviously, you know, everyone's going to call a cadence different, but their job is to, you know, as a backup quarterback, is to basically, you know, fill in for the starting quarterback and, you know, provide this team with a spark and do things and not saying either, you know, who knows will be the starter. You never know, you know. So I think, you know, looking at it from that standpoint, I think, uh, you know, like you said, that is different. But 
like Trent said, I'm a fullback. I, I write as I write, and it don't change for me. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> so right, right. I just run right or run left or play action left, play action right, you know. So, you know, my role doesn't change, but I assume, you know, for the receivers, timing changes, you know, stuff like that and, you know, what they're looking at because then you got to get ready for the scramble for Robert, you know, if he doesn't like what he sees, which mm -hmm. is fine too, mm -hmm. you know. Kurt scrambles, Colt scrambles, but, you know, Robert may scramble a little bit more, you know. So, um, I think, you know, the timing of things definitely will be different, but that's why you practice those things during the weekend. The credit to our scout team, which you no know, one really hears about because those guys right. are giving a look for, you know, basically what we're about to face, and they don't ever get the credit in terms of, you know, um, the practice squad and, you know, the guys who are inactive for that week. So, um, you know, we, the preparation is there every week. You know, yeah. we just, like you said, if we win games, we're not sitting here talking about, you know, what we need to do to fix this. We were on a two-game win streak, and then we lost yesterday. The season's not over, but we're just in a place right now where we don't want to be, and how do you do, you know, what do you do to get yourself out of this? What do you do? Is there anything you can do besides win? Go I mean, is there football. anything? That's all just there is. game plan for Tampa Bay. For people and to the week understand. after the game plan, I believe it's San Fran. And the week after the game plan for whoever you right. play. You know, you just got to take it week by week, just like you do when you're on a win streak, you know. So, um, it's like you said, it's a lot more frustrating because there's going to be a lot of outside sources, you know, people who haven't been there to basically come back in <laughs> and to say <laughs> things. And, you know. I'm glad you cleared uh, that up. No, you know, just, I'm just saying. No, but, no, hey, she's reporting what she sees, and I'm not mad at her at all sure, for that. You know? Sure, sure, sure. You know, I know Britt. She's a great person. She, and she's all been there. She, yeah, she was here with us for years. For so. years. So, you know, like I said, now she's kind of on the outside looking in as opposed to on the inside, inside looking out in terms of a, from a media aspect and knowing us and, you know, stuff like that. So I think, uh, well, like I, I said, she's reported, like, just like uh, she what saw the guy what from she the saw. post. Yeah, Jason Reed, he yeah. reported what he saw, you know. So can you be mad at the guy because for something that he felt? No, because his article is opinionated. So that's what he thought he seen. He wrote about it. So, hey, it is what it is. Let, let's, let's do this, not to, not to stir the pot here, but I, but, but I know you're close with Robert, and I, I know you're a guy from – the very to stir the pot. The very, I know you're close to Rob. No, 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 no. <laughs> but I'm saying, and, 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 I, and I, I'm trying to say this in a positive way. All right. But you, from from the very first day he got here, I mean, you you have been a person that, you know, has had a relationship with Rob. You know, as far as uh, can can do things off the field together, stuff like that. How much of a bad rap? And I know this is just a, a silly journalistic question, but how much of a bad rap? I mean, I want you to say this to the fans, not so much Diane mm -hmm. and me. But how much of a bad rap has this guy gotten? He's got a bad rap because if you think about it, Robert Griffin's only missed games this season. He's been hurt, but he played, he played all, all last, last year. And then, you know, coach's decision to sit him down at the end of the year, and then this year he came back. And, and his numbers last year were better than his rookie year, when he won rookie of the year, by the way. <laughs> so just I just want to remind people of that. Yeah. Yeah. that. <laughs> but like I said, he's getting a bad rap because people – see him as a guy that probably can't stay on the field but when you look at it like that he's only missed four games in his career and you know like you say you're not winning as many games and you know Colt comes in does a great job Kirk does a great job you know so it's all the speculation about guys saying that he could be replaced and you know of course you get a bad rap but then you come back in you get a win you steal the noise but we didn't get that win so the noise is going to continue to you know go out be out there and people are always going to say what if Colt would have started? Well, we don't know if Colt what would have happened if Colt would have started. We don't know if Robert would have played in Dallas. What would have happened? You know, so it was coach's decision. You know, and like I, and you I said, that's what, that's what we go into the game knowing. I yeah. think you need to just give credit where credit is due. Colt played well. He and, played you know, great. Just give him credit for it. He did what he was supposed to he do. He did as what he was supposed to do. Back up on the depth chart. He did what he was supposed it's to do. And he said that. Those it's were true. his words out of his own mouth. And, and, and he and Kurt, to their, to their credit, have said, <laughs> listen, this is Robert's team. And they knew that. And some people got on them for saying that. Like, mm -hmm. oh, well, you know, it's a cop out by Kurt. No, it, it, listen, talent knows talent. <laughs> and talent definitely knows supreme talent. And I, there's no question that Robert Griffin has supreme talent. Mm -hmm. You cannot question his, his uh, you know, his toughness. Because as you said, he's playing on some major. How many guys come back from a dislocated ankle at the quarterback position? How many guys play a full season basically on one leg? And not complain about it. Want to be out point. there? Yeah. So it's four games. That's it. it. When people ask that question, and I'm saying this, D, because when people say this, Diane, has the locker room imploded and guys are, you know, don't respect him? How can you not respect someone that wants to be on the field? I mean, you guys are warriors. That's what you do. That's what you do. That's why. I mean, I'm not sitting here. I mean, I'm not the guy, you know, <laughs> putting all this, leaking all this information that's false and all that other stuff. I mean. At the end of the day, like you said, let Robert be Robert. He's 23, 24 years old. He's going to make mistakes. I'm going to make mistakes. His just are more glaring because he touches the ball every play. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, that's all this question. And we win a the game, then Robert will be back on top of, you know, in terms of the media's sake. 
in terms of top of everything. It, it, that, that, I was just thinking while you were talking, that blows my mind that somebody would say he would lose the locker room he when he blade, wants to man. be. He, he would lose it if he didn't want to. A guy that lost the locker room is a guy who gets no respect. A guy who, you know, when he gives pregame speeches, everyone's turned <laughs> away like this. That's a guy right. with no respect. Well, so Robert gave a pregame speech yesterday. He sure did. And everybody was there. Every Everybody. Every single? <laughs> yeah. Every person yeah. in the that was suited up and the enacted guys were standing right there listening because everyone wants to hear what Robert Griffin has to say. And that's what we Listen, did. this is a tough town. I know, I know, you, I know you, you played your college ball in Philly, yep. and they say Philly's a tough town. D.C. may be it, – it, it's – I say this now because growing up here, being from the area, it, at one point it was just Redskins fans here. Mm -hmm. But, this, but this, this city now and this region now being – you know, one of the wealthiest, if not the wealthiest, is very transient. So it's a lot of people who aren't from here. And I think it's made the, the true diehard Redskins fans a little bit more vocal about everything, good and bad. Mm -hmm. and, That's and, fine. And, That's fine. And, and it is. It's, they're passionate fans yeah. by far. Hey, but I've never seen so many fans with tattoos on. One guy at training camp. <laughs> I remember. Like, yeah, was, but he has amazing? the three Lombardis that, that we have already. Crazy. With spaces all the way around his arm to fill in the rest of the Super Bowl. See, I have a word for that. I don't know if that's a fan. That's optimistic. I don't know if that's a fan. That may be a fanatic. Hey, <laughs> that's that's a where the term oh, came from. Team. Yeah, he, he does. Team. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, how do you feel about a grown man having your name on him? <laughs> <laughs> He go, man, do what he want. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my goodness. That. That's get, pretty funny. You need to get some royalties for that. <laughs> well, look, folks, uh, we've we got to take another break here. Short segment. Our camera guy's telling us got to get a break. Uh, we'll take a break, have one more segment with Darrell, and then also we're going to bring in uh, someone here from yeah, uh, Champ staff. He's uh, he, he, he been chiming and wanting to get up here and ask some questions. So yeah. fire that away, and then we'll wrap up tonight's show. So hang tight. We'll be back. Want whiter teeth in five minutes? Then you want Power Swabs. Coffee, tea, or smoking stains start to fade in just five minutes. Power Swabs lift stains off your teeth for true whitening. They're clinically proven to whiten your teeth on average two shades in five minutes. After seven days, your teeth will be an average six shades whiter. Power Swabs even work on caps, crowns, veneers, and bonding, so all your teeth will be movie star white. Order now to try Power Swabs risk-free. Satisfaction is guaranteed, but you won't find this offer in any store, so order now. Try Power Swabs risk-free now. If you're disabled and unable to work, pay attention to the following message. If you're one of the millions of Americans who are disabled and unable to work, you may be entitled to disability benefits through Social Security. Receiving benefits is your right if you suffer from a physical or mental disability. Whether you're applying for the first time or you've already been denied, we can help. You'll be matched up with an advocate who will evaluate your situation, handle your application, deal with Social Security for you, and handle all appeals. Best of all, there's no fee until you receive your benefits. To get started, call the number on your screen now. And keep in mind, there are a vast number of conditions that make you eligible for disability benefits and dozens of additions that you may not be aware of. So if you're disabled and unable to work, call the Citizens Disability Helpline today for a free, no obligation consultation. Call 1-800-735-0219. Call now. 
gas, bloating, indigestion, constipation that comes and goes. If you're not having normal bowel movements every day, you can suffer from a buildup of toxins that cause upset stomach, constipation, excess gas, or intestinal discomfort. Plus, you could be holding up to 4.5 pounds of fecal waste if you're going to the bathroom only once a day. Even more unwanted weight if you're going less often. But now there's colon flow. Non-prescription colon flow is scientifically formulated with key ingredients to help restore normal bowel function. And you're eligible to try it free for 30 days. We're looking for participants to receive a free 30-day trial, so call immediately. All Natural Colon Flow works gently with your body to eliminate toxic waste and maintain your regularity. Colon Flow is being released to the general public and your area has been selected to try it right now for free. Call immediately to find out how to receive your free 30-day trial. Phone lines are open now. Call 888-560-8896. 888-560-8896. All right, folks, uh, final segment here from Champs Americana, the L House here in uh, Arlington, Virginia, Pentagon Row. Myself, Lake Lewis, Washington Redskins starting fullback, Darrell Young. And as we do always when we have these shows, we try to bring someone from the establishment on uh, where we are. And they handpicked the gentleman to the far left uh, of Andre Walston. What's going on? How y'all doing today? We appreciate you coming on and uh, you got his Redskins jersey on. You know, yeah, uh, most definitely. Redskins fan, first and foremost. First and foremost. All right. Well, Win, we'll, lose, or draw. Well, look, this is this is a short segment, so I want to make sure he gets his gets his time. You know, gets his, gets his shine on, as he says. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna let you fire some questions away. You know, to to Darrell, something that uh. You know, Redskins related questions. Before you do that, though, yeah. can you tell our audience something about the establishment? Uh, have you ever done any kind of remotes like this here? or? Uh, well, we usually do certain venues here. Um, nothing as, you know, glamorous as this. Oh, but. I appreciate that. That's <laughs> nice. That's nice. That's nice. That's we, nice. We, <laughs> we, we, do, we, we do try to put on um, a, a, a nice little scene. Friday night karaoke. Uh, okay. okay. Sundays is always packed here. It's football Sundays. You want to watch football, you come here. There's so many TVs in here. You, you catch every game, you know. Um, nice place. Very yeah. nice place. I would recommend it. Uh, to anyone. So a lot of Redskins fans on Sunday? Oh yeah, most definitely. A lot of Redskins fans and you know, we, we try to we try to hang in there every day, every game, you know, but you know, that's that's what we have to do as fans. We we have to stick and try to have support for each other. And it brings in a little fellowship. But like you said earlier in your segment, uh, there is a lot of different fans in this area. Oh, I so. can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine. So the anything you wanna fire away up to uh, to the rail? Uh, first of all, uh, nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure. Uh, first, I, I had a question for you as far as uh, maybe two or three weeks ago, as we all see as fans in the media, they, uh, they spoke about laughter in, um, in the locker room and the morale, right? <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one. That's right. <laughs> so my question to you is, do you think that the laughter is, is a way to kind of keep you guys as 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 one I, that's what i believe i believe in the locker room to keep frustration down the laughter helps the joking helps and i mean more disciplined people might look at it and say well they lost they should have their heads down but i i, I just wanted to know how you felt about that this is how i feel you know this is how i approach this situation i was in the locker room when those guys were laughing um to be honest with you they weren't laughing at a situation in terms of that we lost they were laughing because one of the guys in the media did something, and Trent said something about a Vine video, you know. So, okay, cool. Now, should they have been laughing? No, you don't have to be obnoxious about things. But at the end of the day, we are human. Do you want to pout about it? I mean, there's <laughs> high, such thing as high blood pressure, all that other stuff. We don't want to have that. But at the end of the day, too, you know, on a serious side, you know, um, obviously, you know, I look at Trent and Pierre as two leaders, and that's the two guys they kind of called out. And I look at those guys as leaders. Those guys consistently make plays. Trent's been to the Pro Bowl. Pierre led the league in receptions. Uh, you know what you're going to get on Sundays. You feel confident as a fan in those two guys, you know, to make a play. So I think, you know, like you said, it was blowing out of proportion a little bit. But at the end of the day, we lost the game. So when yeah. you lose, there's always going to be something that the media has to do something to basically put their name in the situation that I reported this first. I did this, you know. So 
at the end of the day, uh, you know, like I said, being an older guy, a guy that's been on this team, you know, trying to be a captain and all that other stuff, I, I would approach those guys and say, hey, let's just, you know, eliminate all that stuff. We'll be fine. But at the end of the day, those are two grown men. So yeah. Trent, 330 pounds, what am I going to say to him? <laughs> you know, but, uh, <laughs> but, you know, but at the end of the day, too, I mean, those guys, you know, they come to work every day. I know what I'm going to get on Sundays and throughout the week. So I'm not questioning anything on, from, you know, from that aspect. But that was a good question. But I think yeah, the I laughter is needed, you know, yeah. but at the right time. Yeah, I want to know, is that a question that you, you thought of all day, or did you just... <laughs> no, I just actually, like, thought of that because I wanted to think of something to ask you because I wanted to actually talk about yesterday, but I'm not okay. going to get into it. <laughs> that's what we're here for, man. I, I can't shy away from the truth. Man. Yeah, that's what it is. I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm really not, I'm, I'm not per se mad at yesterday, to be honest. I'm, I'm, I'm not mad at the <laughs> offense, let's say that. Let's say that. But um, that was going to my next question to you as far as the youth, because I think that that's where we kind of, we're lacking. Oh, that's good stuff, right? Um, you know, we, oh, we, I see you. I think that because we have a young secondary, yeah. we need a little bit, you know, we need a little bit more, they need more experience in the I, trenches. I agree, but then again, you look at Ryan Clark, who's in year 12, Brandon Merriweather, Merriweather, who's been the two Pro Bowls back-to-back with New England, you know, kind of went into a bad situation in the cover two scheme where you got to be, you know, a guy that listens to a scheme in terms of being a lovey's deal. And now you come here, you make him a playmaker and all that other stuff. So from experience, experience standpoint, we got two safeties who are experienced. We got two corners who are young. Emerson, who's a guy who, you know, who's played the best last year coming into this situation. Now he's kind of forced to be a number one guy. Was Breeland's coming and making plays, stepping up and doing the things that he needs to do, you know, to kind of, you know, make this team uh, in a better situation defensively. But I think when you put experience with younger guys, it's supposed to be jailed together. And they made some good plays, you know. But then again, it comes to the pass rush. It comes to everything else. So you can't leave a corner. I don't care if you have Darrell Rebus out there for seven seconds. I don't care who you are. It's a receiver like myself is going to get I'm going to find a way to get open with Darrell Rebus on me out there. So, I mean, after yeah. seven seconds. But at the same time, like you said, I mean, the, just credit the Vikings to what they did because obviously as a fan and as a, a big supporter of what we do, you want to see your skins oh, yeah. win. As a player, I want to win. But – the thing about this business, you can't win them all, but what can you do to put yourself in a better situation? The defense was playing good. You know, regardless of who we played, you know, Amerson and Breland were heroes a week. Seven days ago, they yeah. were heroes. <laughs> he played. Now, all of a sudden, now they're back to these young, inexperienced guys, you know? So, look at it. You can't listen to the outside reports. You got to go with your gut feeling and know that these guys are out there because Des Bryant and, you know, Terrence Williams on paper are better than what we went against. And Greg Jennings, Jennings and Pat Cordell Patterson are two proven guys. I'm not yeah, saying that, yeah. you know, they're not good, but on paper, you know, those two guys are supposed to be better and they played better, you know. So yeah. um, looking at it from that standpoint, I don't think Cordell Patterson had an outcome, you know, a, a big influence in that game yesterday no, stats-wise. And Greg Jennings made some good plays on a bench route, you know, late in the fourth quarter and stuff like that. So I think uh, tight ends are who kills us, and you know, on other teams. That's, that's where that's – where, I can't say we go wrong, but that's what they're doing. You know? That's yeah. another, another good what, question. What, what, did you think of, uh, what did you think of Teddy Bridgewater? I thought he was a guy who you know, missed a couple throws early on in the game but showed up later when they needed and they won the game. So that was I, like him. I like him. <laughs> that, yeah. that, that was fair. That yeah. was an honest answer. One more, just one more. Okay. We can, right. You know, you can wrap it up. You <laughs> give him my time. You know, what do you say? My shine? Get my shine. <laughs> so uh, three and six right now, right? Wild card. <laughs> Wild card, division. They used to talk about adding another team to the playoffs. Is it this year? I hope. Yeah. <laughs> you get that nah, playoff money. Yeah, nah, it ain't even about the money. It's the experience. When we played Seattle in that, that, that environment, I've never felt. It was two games that I was, will always was remember tough. in my life. We really played tough. Giants on Monday night in 2012. I never felt the stadium shaking in my life. And then the Seattle game, I've never been so cold, excited. You know, frustrated <laughs> all in one game. All, all these emotions in three and a half hours, you know. But um, look at uh, that playoff game. is you something want that I never, ever, ever, ever again, forget. Though, never, yeah. ever forget. And I, I want to go back. I'm not, I'm not going to go back right now. I wish we were in the playoffs deciding this game this week to go to the playoffs, you know. But um, you got to put see, stuff man. in perspective, though. I mean, you know, you just asked as far as wild card, you know, making the playoffs. And you look at Seattle. Seattle coming into this year was – you know, yeah. people are talking about they had a dynasty in the making. They could be better than they were last year. Already proven record-wise, they can't be. Nope. <laughs> but That's why the game's played on the field. Absolutely. And, Who and, and says they would have lost to St. Louis? If you, I mean, St. Louis gave them troubles. Even last year they gave them troubles. Well, they had a tough game yesterday for a little while against Oakland. Yeah, so, that's what I'm saying. It came down with a minute 52 yeah, seconds absolutely. left in the clock. So, so it's the NFL. <laughs> you know, it, it, there's, 
I, look at New England. A couple of weeks ago, they were, they were people were bottom. talking about Pre-season. perhaps. When we played, oh, my gosh. When we played them. They were talking about they were not contenders. Yeah. It's over for Tom Brady. Yeah, oh, maybe sudden, they need Tom to Brady's start back. somebody Tom else. Tom Brady and, never you know, left. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Never yeah. left. The game is played week one. Exactly. <laughs> That's when the season And starts. now they look like they perhaps could be them and the Cardinals, in my opinion, look like the two best teams, at least yeah. in their in their conferences. Yeah. So. You asked some good questions. Those those were those were good. You know, what, what would you grade them on? You look, look, just to let everyone know, before Darrell came here, he wrapped up his TV show that he does on Mondays, uh, News Channel 8. You know, I'm Alex Parker. That's my dude over there, good guy. Uh, so you came over here afterwards. So, so you got a little bit of the media hat. I don't want you to think you can take my job yet. <laughs> I can't but, do that. You're too good at what you do. But, but you know, what would you what would you grade Andre on here? I mean, what would you say? I give him a plus. I mean, he, oh, get, he asked questions that were relevant to the situations that are going on right now. It's not about he didn't talk about the hogs. He didn't talk about you know, all that <laughs> stuff. So I give him a plus. <laughs> oh, well, I appreciate it. Good, good stuff, man. I, right. I appreciate you uh, coming yes, on, stepping up here. A you. lot of people don't have the nerve to do that, especially you know? sit down and ask questions. I didn't expect that. I was thinking, you know, yeah. maybe you know, Robert, what do we do with him? You know, Meet like Paul. His, his questions had a pause to him. He knew he was confident with it. Was, it so. it was, it was, it was in it came from the it came from here. <laughs> <laughs> it came from sitting down and watching every week. Oh, that's, that's good. Too. That's we ain't gonna talk about that. Uh, uh, you were uh, good. Uh, I'm, gonna ruin it. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna stay with my A plus. Okay, a true fan. Right. Well, look, folks, uh, we do have to wrap it up, and I know a lot of you uh, probably came in and watched the uh, the Giants Colts game here. So we'll mm. wrap it up. Uh, we appreciate all the hospitality everyone gave us here tonight. Uh, we hope to be back here soon here at uh, Champs Americana, Pentagon Row. It's the Ale House now. I have to throw that in there. So uh, I definitely look forward to getting back out here again. And I'm sure everybody on behalf of Sports Journey, myself, Darrell, uh, we appreciate all the love we got tonight. Enjoy your food. Have a great night, everyone.